Hey everybody, welcome back to World Drum Club. I'm Kalani, your host and teacher. And in this video, I'm gonna be talking about what to hit what with what. In other words, some of the things that we use in the world of percussion and drumming called implements, uh, sticks and mallets and scrapers and other things, because I, I know that a lot of you don't necessarily know what to use to make music um, on certain instruments. And so I wanna go through, I'm gonna rifle through this box that I just foraged a lot of things, all kinds of things, interesting things, weird things. Um, and I'm gonna go through them with you right now. So welcome to World Drum Club. Here we go. So first off, um, I wanna talk about the difference between a stick and a mallet. Okay, this is fundamental. Everybody knows this, right? Drum stick. So this is a drum set stick because why, how do we know that? Because it's got a bead at the end and a, this tapered uh, shoulder part here. And uh, I'm gonna hold this up to the close up camera so you can get a better look. Typical drum stick, right? Um, a stick is pretty plain. It's just a piece of wood. A mallet is anything that is a handle with something on the end. And in this case, uh, we've got a little bit of Elmo on the end of this. Not really, but I call this the Elmo mallet. Um, here's another smaller version of a mallet, of course. And these are the fuzzy ones. These are going to be softer sounding. If you wanted to have a lower volume, then um, you would use these. Softer sound, a little bit harder. You'd use these rubber ones. So we have you know all kinds of mallets, all the way from super soft to very hard acrylic mallets, wood mallets, even brass mallets, uh, usually used for playing orchestra bells and things where you wanna have it super bright. So mallets range, um, here's another type of mallet. This is a gong mallet, Javanese or Balinese gong mallet. Uh, here's another type of mallet that we use for the West African balaphone or xylophone. This one has actually a stick with, believe it or not, this is a car tire tread material. You, you've got steel belt. <laughs> it's a steel belted mallet. Um, these making mallets out of car tires, all kinds of things. Um, I'm gonna stick with the mallet theme for a second. These mallets are um, similar to some other mallets I'm gonna talk about in a minute. And there's some important differences I want you to understand. These mallets are called Beckin. Um, and these are for playing cymbals. Here's a couple different ones. The larger one is um, a little bit softer sound. So we'd use that for just a softer roll or for bigger cymbals and the smaller one um, for a brighter sound. So as a percussionist, um, I don't, you know, I, I always wanna think about the instrument I'm playing and then try to select the most appropriate implement. In this case, it would be a mallet for whatever the music is and whatever the instrument properties are. So we take all of that into consideration. That's why we have so many different mallets and sticks. Um, it's actually kind of unbelievable if you really get into it. And I, I of course, play lots of different instruments, um, not just ethnic or what we'd call ethnic world percussion, but also orchestral percussion. And so I'm, I'm investing in all sorts of things. Um, I'm gonna put these down because I want to go through this. I want to rifle through it. So similarly to the, the cymbal mallets, and I want to point this out because um, this, this is important. These look like mallets that you would use to hit cymbals. They look similar, but they are not the same. These mallets are what we call mallet instrument or keyboard mallets. These are for instruments like marimba or vibraphone. And so we, as a percussionist, these are also rattan handles, very nice, comfortable. Um, these are way more expensive and they're very particular. They have a particular quality to them and we don't like to play these. Hold these up over here so you can see them better. I don't know how they're gonna do in the green screen. They might disappear. Um, we don't use these mallets, the marimba mallets. We don't use these for hitting cymbals and playing other things, unless they're old and we use them for what we call a multiple setup where we're playing all kinds of different instruments. But we generally don't wanna use our nice, expensive, um, and these range from anywhere from 
$50 to $150 a set, maybe more nowadays. I don't know. It's been a while since I bought some Vibe or marimba mallets. But these are different. They're used for marimbas and vibraphones. So they look similar, but before you grab somebody's mallets and start playing uh, you know, on a cymbal or a woodblock with them, um, ask. Make sure they're not somebody's expensive vibraphone or marimba mallets. Um, similarly, here's another mallet we use for hitting a drum. This is a timpani mallet, and you can use these for tom-toms. Uh, you could use them, I mean, you could use these on a drum set. A lot of drummers will get these kind of mallets to use on drum set. But ideally, uh, these are timpani. These are really made for timpani or kettle drums. Here's a, a soft one and then a harder, much harder one. And uh, these also, a timpanist would have several different kinds of mallets, many different types for um, harder playing, you know, wood mallets to staccato sounding, to legato, to ultra soft. It all depends on what the music calls for. And I think it's really interesting to note that is when you see the timpanist back there in the orchestra, they're not just playing everything with the same mallets. They're actually making a lot of musical choices about which mallets they select for which pieces of music, for what passages, what type of sound do they need. All right, let's see. Oh, here's another mallet, a giant one. This is a, another kind of bass drum mallet. This could be used probably for a, a surdu or a Brazilian bass drum. It's actually a pretty, pretty big mallet, but you could use this on a bass drum of some kind. Again, furry soft mallet. Um, and there's all kinds of mallets like that. Um, let's get into something else now. Here's another cymbal mallet. Oh, before we leave mallets completely, here's another, you know, just super cheap uh, little paddle drum mallet. Um, so we have everything from the expensive, you know, cymbal and marimba mallets all the way down to just plastic little cheap mallets with like a rubber ball at the end. Um, that you can use for different types of drums. Uh, let's go into some sticks. So these are some of the bigger sticks in here. Let's get a few of these out. So what do these all have in common? They're all pretty beefy. Uh, look at these. So I'll just put them, here's your close up. All different kinds of bigger sticks. Now these all fall under the category of dun dun sticks. Dun dun drums are West African bass drums. Here's one that I designed a number of years ago. These are just big wooden sticks. Here's one that I made. It's just literally from a, a tree branch that I made. Here's one that somebody else made. And these are all pretty hard, hardwoods, uh, semi-hardwoods, and just built to last. And you're playing like usually a drum with a thick um, cow skin. I wouldn't use these on smaller tom-toms, drum set, Certainly not on timpani or gran casa, like an orchestral bass drum. Um, I would not hit those with these because they will dent the heads. So we have to be careful when we talk about uh, the mallet, I mean the stick, um, if, especially when you get up into these large sticks to know what instruments are okay to hit and what instruments are not okay. So if, it, if the instrument has um, a thin head, especially like a plastic head or mylar head, you want to be really careful and not hit it with a wooden stick. This one is, oh, that's another drum stick. So here's a couple, we're going to get more into sticks now. Um, here's an interesting one. This one is for a talking drum and you can see there that it's got a 90 degree angle and also a kind of flat flat playing head right here, flat surface. And that would be for the uh, West African style talking drum. You can look that up, um, but that's used this way. All right, uh, another, another interesting stick that's a little bit different are these. And I don't know if any of you will have an idea of what these are used for. Look at the shape. And yes, they are not chopsticks. They are not gigantic chopsticks, but look at that beautiful wood. These are absolutely gorgeous. I believe these are solid koa wood, and that should give you a clue as to where these are from. These are Tahitian. Um, they're Pacific Islander instruments, and these are made to play a kind of log drum called the toere. And these are super hard, 
beautiful instrument, beautiful sticks, and a beautiful instrument. So look up Toede, and maybe I'll leave uh, these names below so you know how to spell them. But these are Toede sticks, also good for banishing vampires in a pinch, just in a pinch. Here's a couple kinds of, or a few kinds of bundled sticks. We've got two wooden types. These are just lots of sticks put together. And then here's a plastic version. So there's three different types there. These are great for practicing um, softer sounds like drum set. Uh, they lower the volume usually of whatever you're playing. So it's good for, you know, if you want to add snare drum or cymbals or drum set to a piece, but you don't want to be as loud. Uh, they also sound a little bit different, a little, little crunchier sound, a little softer sound because you're dealing with multiple little sticks that are hitting together. What else do we have in here? Okay, so here's another stick that you might think is a drum set stick, but look at the ends. They're the same, and we don't have a bead on here like we had on the regular drum set. This is a timbali stick, and I have a couple different kinds in here. Timbales are, of course, our Latin percussion instrument, popular in salsa music. Um, think about Cuba, artists like Tito Puente play the timbales, and here's three different sizes of timbali sticks. So timbali sticks are long, regular length drums, uh, drum sticks, but they don't have a bead at the end, they're just equal at both sides. That's timbali sticks. Similarly to the timbali sticks would be little sticks like this, and these are basically cut down timbali sticks. I call these circle sticks. I actually designed these years ago uh, to be played uh, in the classroom or for recreational music making where you don't need a giant stick. You just wanna have a smaller stick and you could use anything like this. Here's a homemade version. You can actually see here that I, I chopped a timbali stick in half. Um, and then we were uh, fortunate to have Vic Firth make these for a while. Um, and these are really great for just playing little instruments like frogs and uh, wood blocks and little bells um, without uh, having them be super loud and easy to control because this is plenty of stick for a child, a, a music student, or even an older adult. So these are awesome for that. So unfortunately you can't buy these uh, new anymore, but you can make your own by getting a tamale stick and cutting it in half. Um, going down in size, all right, this is a stick that came with some instrument that I have. I'm not sure what it came with. Um, but it's even just a smaller version. This, you could get into the scraper category, maybe use this for um, a weirdo um, or some kind of scraper. Also, this kind of stick, guess what that is? And if you said chopstick, you're right. This is a chopstick. And I will use chopsticks for scrapers. Um, also sometimes playing little, little tiny drums like a tambourine or something or whatever, anything that I want to get a special little sound on. But mostly as a scraper, we would use a tiny stick like that. Speaking of scrapers or raspers, let's move on to, these are, these are little differently shaped sticks. And these came with a couple of the frogs that I bought. And these would be used for the frog um, as a rasper tool to scrape the frog. You could also use these for anything you want. Just uh, take into consideration that they are unevenly tapered. Um, what else do we have? We have a couple more things. I want to end with one more uh, beater. And this is a special kind of beater. What is that made out of? That is metal, right? This is a triangle beater. It's very, um, angle, it's very sharp at the tip. I don't know if you can really tell, but this tip is not rounded at all, which means the edge is sharp. Um, the thing I want you to understand about this, we only play triangles with the triangle beater. Well, okay, I won't say only. We only play metal things with the triangle beater. Sometimes we scrape a bell tree. We might hit what's called a, uh, a crotali or a tuned cymbal, some sort of tiny bell. Um, usually triangles are the most common. Um, there are a few exceptions, but we never use these on drums. Um, because we could break the head very easily. And we usually don't use these on anything made of wood because we can dent it and start to chip away at the wood. These, are, these can be very destructive. So just be careful with your triangle beaters. I personally don't hand out triangles to groups of people who are not informed and skilled with group drumming because I just don't want to have to worry about 
people thinking that it's okay to hit an, a drum with this, like a bongo or a djembe or something. So I kind of leave these out of community music um, events. But if you're a classroom teacher, please make sure your students understand that triangle beaters are for triangles, and that's it, unless you get special permission. All right, a couple other things that appear to be sticks, but that are not. Um, these are, well, okay, the, it's in the name, rhythm sticks. Um, but these are really made to be struck together and maybe, you know, scraped like that. Um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't encourage or recommend that you play or have anyone else uh, play instruments with these. These are really made for um, rhythm stick activities to be played, you know, on themselves, just rhythm sticks. Similarly, plus if you play drums with these, you're going to get blue paint on them on the drums, and we don't want that. Similarly, I have another beautiful hardwood. These are rosewood. Claves. Claves look like sticks to hit things to some people. And I discovered that the hard way. So uh, these are an instrument. These are a musical instrument in and of themselves. Claves are meant to be struck together, not used to hit other things. These are not big fat drumsticks. Um, so we don't hit wood blocks, we don't hit drums, we don't hit anything with the clave. We only strike them together. All right, and that is going to almost conclude it. I've got one more special instrument just for you guys for watching. This is my uh, spatula paddle. I just I bought this at Sur La Table because uh, I couldn't resist, but I sometimes use this guy on actually little drums and percussion like bongos and things it actually sounds great you can steal that idea and uh, maybe you'll make somebody's day all right hopefully i've made your day by sharing some information that's useful if it is if i've done that give it a thumbs up make sure to subscribe you guys know the drill i'm kalani this is world drum club thanks for watching